Lord, you are good and your mercy. Good evening, good evening, good evening, mighty Christian women. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. You all, this is a wonderful song, You Are Good, by Israel New and Newbury. No, I don't own the rights to this song, but I'm sure getting in my praise and my worship right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we work for who you are. I'm going to let you all jump on, get yourself situated for Kingdom Teaching. Good evening, Teresa. Good evening, Carleen. It's so good to be in the land of the living. In spite of it all, God is still good. He is still good. He is good. He is good. Hey, Lori, you need to be right here tonight. Me too, Lori. Me too. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, Mary. Hey, Jacinta. How are you? Hey, Antoinette Lipfuck. How you doing? Salaya, how are you? You're good all the time. Yeah, he's good. Yes, and all the time. Is he good to y'all? Just say he is good. Matter of fact, I know he's great, but just for the sake of this song, say he is good all the time. All the time. Yes. Woo, let's lift up a shout of praise. Come on, Charlene. Come on, Melissa. Come on, Fanta. Come on, Shaquanda. Let's get it in. Hey, Connie, how are you? Hey, Lavinia. Mama Lavinia, how you doing? Hey, Roxy. Hey, Q. Yes, his mercy, you all. His mercy endureth forever, you all. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Yes, Tanisha, how are you? Kenya. Yes, he is good. He's good all the time. From generation. The generation forever. People from every nation. Come on, y'all. To generation we worship you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship. We worship him for who he is. Yes. Somebody put up their hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For who you are. How many of you all just worshiping him? Worship him because he is good to us, you all. It is only he that is keeping us, not we ourselves. He require our worship. He require our praise. Hey, Sharnita. Hey, Mary, how are you? We worship him not for what he's doing. We worship him for because of who he is. And he is good. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can everybody just give them a hand clap? Put up there in your uh, reply just a hand clap. Give it to him, give it to him, give it to him because he is good. Not for what he is doing, but for who he is, you all. And I don't want us to lose sight that he's good because he's just keeping us from this uh, uh, pandemic. He's just keeping us because we're still here. Not for what he's doing. It's only because of who he is. All right. I want you all to always know that sometimes we get to worshiping God because he did this for us. He did that for us. He did this for us. He did that for us. And that's wonderful. Ain't nothing wrong with a little praise here. But at the end of the day, we got to lift up our voice, lift up our hands, say hallelujah because of who he is. He is Alpha and Omega. He is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. He's our master. He's our priest. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our Redeemer. He's our strong tower. That's who he is. Y'all, I'm excited. Hey, Sheree. 
Hey, Sheree, because of who he is. Yes, Cherlisky. Let's remind ourselves because it's all about him and the kingdom of God. Yes, come on, Antoinette, with those hand claps. Come on now, Annetta, with those hand claps. Come on, Lakeisha, give them to him. Come on, Joyce, praise him. That's it. If y'all could do it in your home, I know you could do it in your church house, but you ain't in your church house right now. You are in your home. You should be at least. We all quarantine and God is moving all this stuff. Can you praise me in your home? Can you praise me in your house? Don't look at your church house. Look at your house. Can you give him the praise? Can you give him the glory? Can you give him the honor? Well, you all, we got a great teaching on tonight. This is our part four of kingdom teaching. And I'm excited on how to walk in my spiritual uh, authority based upon my maturity. All right. And that has been one. And we've been talking about uh, in, in every aspect about offenses. Uh, we started talking about um, uh, how do we love when we don't feel like it. You know, we had some great teachings. Uh, and I know that you all were blessed because I was blessed. All right. So I'm going to get into it tonight. All right. And um, I want us to really, really focus. Are y'all ready? If y'all ready, just say I'm ready. Just say I'm ready, okay? Um, I pray that you all are attentive. I pray that your mind has been also uh, brought into his presence uh, because the spirit of the Lord lives on the inside of you. It don't live on the outside. It lives on the inside of you, all right? So let me have a word of prayer with you all as you all are putting up there, ready, 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 ready. Yes, Roxy, I love that emoji. You ready, ready. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We never take light of your presence. Father, we thank you because you are omnipresent. You're everywhere all at the same time. You have no respecter of persons. So Holy Ghost, have your way on tonight. Rather we hear virtually, rather we hear live. We thank you for this technology. Father, we thank you that in this end time season that we're in, you still are making a way for us to receive your word, hear your word, because you said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Father God, illuminate every heart, illuminate every mind, let my words be that of you. Let my mouth be that of yours. Father God, let my ears hear what you are saying. Let me convey your message precisely. Let it hit the heart of every woman, God, as she is deemed in your eyes a dunamis woman. But at the end of the day, we are all of your daughters. So we're going to say thank you as our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you're in agreement, just put up that our Father. You know, our Father. I want you to just give reverence to our Father because we are his daughters. And I love him. He's not just God. He's our father, our heavenly father. So just put up that our father, our father. All right. Because I'm excited. I'm excited. So uh, as we were talking about kingdom teaching on tonight. Hey, Miss Stephanie, how are you? Carolyn, our father. Yes, our father. And so in the kingdom teaching, uh, we was talking about uh, how to love when we don't even feel like it. And we were talking about uh, Abigail, and we were talking about her being married to a, a, a foolish man, a man where his name literally meant a stupid person, and how God is really utilizing us and growing us up, okay, that we may be spiritually mature to be able to act and respond and intercede on behalf of our men, on behalf of the man in your life, on behalf of his sons, all right? So how many of you all really, really are still operating as Abigail? Let me know. Let me know if y'all are getting that spirit of Abigail. If you are, just put up there, I'm getting like Abigail. And I'm put up there, I'm getting like her. I need some work like her. I need to be like her more. Whatever you are at this place uh, with the spirit of Abigail so you can love when you don't feel like it, okay? I want you to put that up there because that's very, very important. We already know that we're not going to be the bait of Satan, okay? We already know that. But we also know that uh, we're going to literally walk in our spiritual authority as we continue to effectively commune with God and man. All right. She sent us at a work in progress. <laughs> uh, Keisha said, I have some Abigail tendencies. Come on with the tendencies. OK, uh, oh, we all got some work to do. I need some work like Abigail. Come on, Meredith. That's why you're here. I'm getting like Abigail, Michelle said, but I got some work, though. But uh, my heart is open. Come on for the open heart. Uh, Sheree, I need some work like her. Come on. We all do. I'm getting like Abigail. And you know what? Sometimes you all and I want to bring it on real to you. Y'all know I'm going to keep it real with y'all. 
Sometimes we're so busy trying to be like Jesus that we need to learn how to be like some of the people that God used before we get to him. Come on now. I know that may be a little heavy for y'all, but it's the truth. For y'all, the religious folks, it may be a little bit heavy. Like, what you mean? What you mean, Pastor D? Yeah, you're so busy trying to be like Jesus. You want to go to the ultimate, okay? And why don't you we try a little bit to be like Sarah when he she called her husband Lord? Why don't we try to be a little, have a little attributes like Abigail? These are the women that God used so we can get like him to be able to reverence and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his redemption and his redeeming power. Sometimes we got to take some attributes on like Esther. You know what I'm saying? She said, if I perish, let me perish, but I got to go and petition to the king. I got to go save a nation, okay? Maybe we need to be a little bit like Ruth. Well, we know how to glean from Naomi, a spiritual mother. We know how to just take instructions and don't be that woman that, oh, I heard God for myself and God told me this. No, no, no. We got to look at some other folks that we need to try to glean from so we can work our way up to being what Jesus wants us to be. All right. Because Christ is on the inside of us. All right. So we all getting there. All of you all say I am a work in progress. I am a work in progress because when you stop being a work in progress, we're going to be saying ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And that ain't what we're going to do right now because this ain't your time for that. All right. So for tonight, all right, we're going to deal with literally as we climax this kingdom teaching series. We're going to climax it with literally learning how to use our maturity to walk in our authority, okay? How to utilize or use my maturity to walk in my authority. Now, as I stated on last week, I firmly believe as we are still a work in progress, that every woman in Mighty Christian Woman, women, is a dunamis woman. And in, to become that dunamis woman, you have to have embarked upon what we call adulthood, okay? Remember I talked about everybody being an adult. The Christ on the inside of you. I'm not talking about an adult because you think you're 21 or older or you got a driver's license or you got a state ID. I'm talking about an adult. Adult where Christ is on the inside of you and you have the ability as a dunamis woman to respond in love. Okay? You're not a toddler where you start ripping and running and doing all kind of stuff on your own. You're not a, a baby where every time something, something happened to you, the Christ inside of you start crying because you don't get your way. You're not a teenager where you start making crazy decisions, thinking you're grown when you really, really got some more work to do. But now you have embarked upon adulthood. Put up there, Christ in me has embarked adulthood. Okay, that means he, you can handle more responsibilities. You know how to respond in love. You might not get it right all the time, just like while we're a work in progress, but you are an adult. And if you really believe the Christ in you is an adult, now you may be 24, you may be 25, you may be 30, you know, you might not have embarked upon 40 and 50 and as an adult, but you still are an adult. Christ in you is saying, you can handle some more responsibilities. When challenges come, you know how to handle it in love. When I put the pressure on you, you know how to respond accordingly. When you don't get your way, you don't start having a temper tantrum and gossiping and talking. You know how to still be mature in your speech. Yeah, come on now. Yes, yes, that's what, that's what, that's what he wants. So that means he's really waiting to say, okay, I want you to walk in some authority with this. I want you to walk in some authority, okay? Because in the authority in Christ Jesus, it's a whole nother realm. Everybody put up their R-E-A-L-M, realm, okay? And that's what the kingdom is about. The kingdom is about your mind, your soul, going into another realm in Christ. You don't think like you used to think. Yeah, I could tell this man off. Yeah, I could do this to him. Yeah, I could do that to him. But no, that ain't who I am no more. 
That ain't who I am. I could. But when my thoughts come that way, I kick over into my kingdom realm. I keep kick over into my sovereignty. I kick over into who I am in Christ Jesus. Y'all with me? If you with me, tell you with me. That's how Abigail was. She quickly shifted. We all got some things that we could do, but I ain't going to do it no more. That's not who I am. So I'm not going to allow the enemy to set me back. All right. Now, that's the first thing that we got to be in agreement tonight. You're not going to let the enemy set you back. You're going to keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. All right. Now, how do we use our maturity to walk in our authority? All right. That's some of the stuff we're going to get into tonight. So I, 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 I put the newsletter out there and the newsletter was giving you all some insight about uh, really what we're going to talk about tonight. And I put in there in the newsletter, how many of you all read the newsletter? Let me know if you read the newsletter. If you read the newsletter, say I read it. Or if you just saw it, say I saw it, but I didn't read it. Okay. But if you read the newsletter, let me know. I want to know. I want to know who's reading the newsletter. I want to know that if it's getting to you. I want to know that you're really taking the time. Now, regardless if you do or not, I'm going to still write it. We're going to still put it out there. But it's your responsibility as an adult. Okay? Thank you, Gay. You read it. That you read these things. Angelique, thank you for reading it. Lakeisha, thank you. Because that's part of your growth in preparing you. Okay? So the maturity part in there that I put was one of the things my mother used to always say is, baby, you ripe for picking. You ripe for picking, okay? And as I stated in the newsletter that I didn't know all what she meant, like you ripe for picking, okay? But I want to verbally tell you what I was talking about. I want to verbally share with you because I think I can get a little bit more in depth with it as opposed to just making this long newsletter and reading it like that. Thank you, Roxy, for reading it. Thank you, Taliski. okay? Thank you, Mama Lavinia. So when she was saying, baby, you ripe for picking, it's because... As I was growing up and as I was developing, she saw me making what I call foolish decisions, okay? And with foolish decisions, I was going through my process. Now, she disciplined me. She reprimanded me. Yes, she did. But at the end of the day, she let me take the responsibility for the decisions that I made. Rather, they was decision when I was a, 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 a teenager, a preteen, even before I left her house. She never rescued me out of my mess. Oh, come on now. I'm starting. I'm starting. I'm about to go there, y'all. Y'all get, I hope y'all getting this revelation. I hope you're catching it. Elizabeth Rush, we want to make sure you get that. We want to do it. We want to make sure you're getting that. So the newsletter, when I was making foolish decisions, when I was going out there thinking, I knew what I was doing, all right? When she found out, okay, she never, she reprimanded me. Trust me on that one. She disciplined me. Yes, she did. But she did not rescue me from my mess. She allowed me, yes, Aretha, sound like your mom, to find out what was going on in that mess that it can grow me up. Come on now. And as I got those life lessons in my mess, as I got those life lessons based upon my decision making, it grew me up. And then she came back and said, now nah, you're right for picking. You're right for picking. So that means you developed in some areas. You developed in some ways. You've come to a level of maturity that the plans that I have for your life OK, they're going to come to an expected end. Now, that's just my mother on a natural level. So I want y'all to shift that same analogy to our father on a spiritual level. He don't rescue out us out of all of our mess. He don't rest. You want him to. Daddy, if you just get me out of this, Lord, if you just get me out of this, I promise you, I serve you for the rest of my life. Father, if you just don't let this happen, OK, I, I promise you I'll do better. We want him to rescue out of mess. He said, no, 
Because it's that mess that's going to mature you. It's that mess that's going to grow you up. It's that mess that's going to keep you hard life lessons. See, this is what's wrong with our generations that's coming up. It's because parents always rescuing them, make, cleaning up their mess, cleaning up their dung, not letting them take some of the responsibilities for what they did. Knowing that I got your back, okay? Knowing that I ain't going to let you fall but I'm going to let you learn from it. So when she said I'm ripe for picking, she knew that I had developed in a certain area in my life that now she could put a greater demand on me. She could put a greater responsibility because now that same thing come my way, I'm going to walk in my authority. Come on now. I'm going to walk in my authority. I ain't, finna, I ain't going there. I'm going to tell that little boy who, who, who was kissing me you know what I'm saying? Or made me stay out late past my curfew or that little knucklehead that I was out there talking to or that little girlfriend that caused me to get reprimanded because I stayed out late when I wasn't supposed to. She now gives me the ability to say, look, y'all, I got to go home. Look, y'all, you ain't going to do this. Look, y'all, I ain't going to smoke that weed no more. I ain't doing all that stuff. So she allowed me to now walk in my authority where she didn't have to put me in check. I put myself in check. I put my enemies in check. Come on, y'all. I hope y'all getting this. Okay? I'm standing up to my friends who I thought was my friends, but they really my foes. Okay? F-O-E-S. How many of you all really thought that you had a friend and it was really your foe? F-O-E. You may have been sleeping with her. You may have been talking to her. You may have been went to school with her, but you didn't know how to walk in your authority because you was emotionally attached. Come on now. Somebody put up their emotionally attached. I told y'all your emotions are designed to F you up. They really are designed to faith you up. Now, I ain't going to get into that tonight. I'm going to come back around the corner and let y'all mature on that a little bit more, okay, at another time. But that's what it is. So maturity is your state and your quality of being mature. That means you have a rightness about you. You have developed in that area that I can say, you know what? My mama ain't home. Y'all ain't supposed to be here. I don't care what. She out of town. Y'all got to go. All right. I'm not going to disrespect her. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Do you know that that's what our father want us to do? He don't want you to be no little kid that I, he got to keep telling you what to do. or He got to keep rescuing you. Put yourself in check and put your enemies in check and tell them, Satan, you got to go. Satan, you about to get about my house. Satan, you about to get about my peace. Satan, you about to get up out of my soul. Okay. Get your feelings out of the way and walk in your authority because you have developed in that area. You're not afraid to hurt people's feelings. You're not afraid to walk in your authority. I don't care what you think about me. I know what I am supposed to do in Christ and that's what I'm going to do. Okay? Now, it's a way that you're going to do it, but you got to first know who you are. All right? I ain't going there. I may be scared, but I ain't going there. Now, I asked all the ladies in Mighty Christian Women, some of them replied, and I said, what do you really need as the woman for your spiritual maturity, for your spiritual growth, for your spiritual development? Because I want to meet your desires. I want to meet your needs. I don't, I don't believe in coming on here for kingdom teaching, and I'm just going to tell you what I think. OK, I want to get this thing together and I want to teach you with specificity now. It's about, last time I checked, about 43 women commented, okay? Maybe more. But I want to give you all a little glimpse of what they said that they needed for spiritual growth and maturity. These are adults in Mighty Christian Women, okay? And I'm saying this because I want you to measure yourself. Some, uh, one lady said, I need more spiritual guidance. I need more spiritual guidance. Now, they said a whole lot, but I just summed it up, y'all. She said, I need more spiritual guidance. Do you know it takes maturity for you to be 40, 50, or 60 years old and say you still need some more spiritual guidance? That takes some maturity, okay? One lady said, I need more wisdom. 
Now that takes some maturity for you to have your own house, your own clothes, your own kids, your own mate or whoever you got in your life. And you got some responsibilities, but you can still say, Pastor D, I need some more guidance, some more wisdom. I don't know everything. I might have been sitting in church all my life. I may have been going there. I may be a pastor's kid, but I still need more wisdom. Do you know it really, one lady said, I need more healing, the inner child within me. That takes maturity to admit that I'm grown and look like a full grown woman, hips, tits, and all that, but it's an inner child in me that still need healing. See, that's some maturity right there. Then, this is one of the ones that I love you all. This particular woman, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I think her name was Maria on this. I, got, I had to look at her twice. She said, Pastor D, I don't even know what I need. <laughs> she said, I don't know what I need, but I know I need something. I know something is missing. Come on, Jesus. Do you know that is a humble heart? Okay. She was like, I don't know what I need, but I know something is missing. I know I need more. I know there's something there that I got to get. I can't tell you what it is, but I know something is missing and I need it. Now, how many of you all can say that tonight? How many of you all can say, I know I need something. I might not be able to convey what it is, but I know I need something more. I know something is missing in my life, but I know that I got to get it. That is spiritual maturity. Do not let the enemy behoove you, deceive you, that because you can say hallelujah, clap your hands, shout, talk in tongues, Rebot tie my bow tie, okay? Read a scripture, read a book, deliver a sermon that you are spiritually mature to walk in your authority. Don't believe the hype, okay? Because that's when he'll come right down your street and mop you up. To walk in your authority is to know what I need and still pursue it at all costs. That's when you become spiritually mature. Never getting familiar with God. Never getting familiar with a scripture. Never getting familiar because you call yourself, and I'm not saying that you do on here, but letting someone say, I'm an evangelist. I'm a prophet. I'm a pastor. And you got to think that they got it all together because that's what they call themselves. Don't deceive or be deceived because when you are humble and can say, God, I don't know what I need, but I know something is missing. I know something is missing. That's what he's saying. You're ready. You're ripe for picking. You're fully developed. Okay. You know, I'm going to step in and I'm going to move on your behalf. All right. Now, I want you all to turn to Romans, the 12th chapter. Okay. I'm going to go there. Romans, the 12th chapter. All right. Because in mighty Christian women, you all. It's time to go to a whole nother dimension in God. Are you all ready? And I'm going to give you some understanding today. I can't teach it all to you on this kingdom teaching because I can sit with y'all for about six weeks in a class, okay, and help you to just dig in some stuff. But I want to give it to you straight without a chaser. I want to give you some stuff that's going to cause your mind to be provoked because at the end of the day, in order for you to be mature, your mind got to change. Your mind got to be renewed, okay? Without a renewed mind, ain't no maturity. Without a renewed mind, you just a bunch of fluff and a bunch of hot air thinking you got it all together. But when the enemy come after you, you dumb me down because you don't know how to walk in your authority, all right? And that ain't me. So I want all y'all to say, that will not be me. That will not be me, all right? Now, Romans 12, and I'm going to talk about one, two, and three. I'm going to stick with those three scriptures, okay? And I'm going to not take it in that order, but I'm going to take it in an order that you can really, really get an understanding, okay? So instead of reading Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3, I'm going to be a little bit different than the average teacher, and I'm going to read Romans 3, 2, and 1. 
Okay? Romans 12, 3, 2, and 1. All right? And I'm going to do this because I'm implementing a strategy. A strategy for you to get it. All right? All right? A strategy for you to get it. Now, let's go there. I'm reading from the um, New King James Version. All right? And so I want you to, if you have your Bible, let's read. If not, stay focused and listen, all right? Apostle Paul is talking to the, uh, to the Romans, okay? And just to give you a little backdrop, as I want to just paraphrase it in my own words, the Romans was a little high-minded, okay? They thought that they was all together lovely, had all this um, uh, uh, empire doing their thing, had their structure, had their system, and they had a hard time comprehending the redemption power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that what was for the Jews was for the Gentiles, okay? All people were now one in the eyes of Christ, all right? So that's just a little backdrop. So this is why it's in the book of Romans. Now, Apostle Paul says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man among you, but to think of himself now no more high, okay? To think soberly according to the uh, God has dealt with them every man a measure of faith okay so that's verse three let me break it down for you bottom line wrong reading glasses but I know what it says and I'm gonna uh, give it to you straight apostle Paul says in other words don't think of yourself more highly than what you really are okay he said God has given every man a measure of faith. And you better be sober in your mind to know how, what measure you operate. Okay. So don't think that you got it all together when you just get a greater mustard seed of faith. Don't think you got it all together. Step out on really, really, really think you got it all together, but now fear come in. Don't think too highly of yourself. All right. Now that's verse three. Now I'm going to read verse two. Verse two says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right. Now, I know that you all may be familiar with that, but in the body of Christ, this is what we have a tendency to do. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what we do. And we stop right there. And we think that that is the complete scripture. And it's not. Because literally it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind that you may prove the perfect and acceptable will of God for your life. Now, who got to do to prove it? I'm going to stop right there and let you answer that question. If it says that you may prove the acceptable and perfect will of God for your life, who has to do the proving that your mind has been changed? I'm going to wait for some answers. Who has to do the proving? Is it you or is it God? Is it you or is it God? Jacinta, you. Thank you. I appreciate your answer. All right. It's you, not God. You have to go through a process. And if you think that you're too highly of yourself, if you think that you got all this faith because everything is comfortable for you, this is why we're in this pandemic right now. This is why God is shaking us up because he want to challenge your faith. Okay. He wants you to think that, that he wants you to know that you still have a need for him. Don't think that you've been all this and all that because a lot of us have been impacted, whether we scared to go outside, whether you've been laid off of your job, whether you don't know what's going to happen on the next move. At the end of the day, he is renewing our minds that you may prove the perfect and acceptable will of God for your life. Now, what the heck does that have to do with spiritual maturity? Let me give it to you, okay? Let's look up the word perfect. It's right here in Romans 12. 
perfect will of God does not mean you're not going to do any wrong. That ain't what the perfect mean. That ain't, that ain't nowhere near. So don't think that you're perfect because you ain't. Don't think that you ain't going to make no mistakes because you ain't. That's where your education come from. Don't think that you all this and all that because you're not. Okay? Perfect literally means complete. Complete in various applications. Complete in various applications. So that means you got to prove to yourself and you got to prove to God that in areas of your life, mentally and morally, you have been changed. Come on now. It's all lining back up with your character. With your character. Okay? What are you doing in private? How are you maturing? Because you could easily go out here and go to work and go to church and go in the public and say, oh, hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. And when you come home, you got a bad attitude. You got a stinking attitude. You don't know how to speak. You don't know how to regard your mankind. You don't know how to regard your man. You don't know how to sit down and effectively communicate from your inner self, okay? You have a sense of dependability on your pocketbook more than your faith. All right? So God is taking us through a transformation process that our minds may become mature in God. And that mind, as you all going to learn, is one aspect of your mind. Okay. That's why you're going to go through some challenges. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some changes because you can't mature without challenges. You can't mature without trials. You can't mature without things coming in your life to make you uncomfortable. All right. But you got to prove it at that very time. Are you going to act out of your new mind or are you going to act out of your old mind? Yeah, come on, Jesus, come on through. Can you really love when you're not being loved? Can you respect when respect is not deserved? Can you really give when you don't have? Can you really trust when you've been broken and betrayed? That's how you mature. You can't just go in no enemy's camp. I speak in authority. I take authority over the devil. I take authority over the enemy. And when time challenges come, you whine, you complain, you moan, you get frustrated, you get overwhelmed, you start gossiping with your girlfriends, you start talking all kind of stuff. Can you stay still? Can you allow God to transform you? All right? Now, that's going to take me to verse one. Let's go there. Romans 12 and verse 1. This is how you're going to get it. Everybody say, I got to get it. It says in verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. So in other words, let me break it down in my Chirac version, okay? Because I'm from Chicago. I'm in Atlanta, but I'm from Chicago. In other words, it's saying, present your body. It didn't say your soul. It didn't say your spirit. In other words, don't do all the things. It is your reasonable service. And all that I've done for you, all that I have got you through, all that I have brought you through, all that I have spared you from, the least that you can do is give me your body. Give me your behaviors. I ain't talking about, ooh, well, I ain't giving him, my, giving him my body. Oops, I slept with a man last night. That ain't what I'm talking about. Attitude, your mind, because the way you think is the way you behave, okay? Your body to me, holy, acceptable. It's the least that you could do for me. And when you do that, you won't be conformed to the world, but you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you the acceptable will of God, that your character in the play, you will be loyal, you will be dependable, you will be a uh, 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 lovable, that you will display the godly character that I have. And then you won't think too highly of yourself. 
You will understand the faith that you have. You will know the measure of faith that you have. You will be you will be in this area. Thank you, Lord. Because you know what? This challenge came to my life. This challenge came to me. This challenge came and I know I ain't handling it properly. So now I need to grow in this area. That is when you are spiritually mature. Spiritual maturity don't act like you got it together. Spiritual maturity, no, you ain't got it together. Know that you need something more. Know that you're missing something, but you're going to humble yourself. You're going to present your body a living sacrifice. You're going to be holy and acceptable unto him because out of all that he's done for you, that's the least you can do for him. Now you're ready to start walking in your authority. You can't exemplify authority against the enemy until you take authority over your own life. All right? You got to do it. Now, how many of you all know you got to walk in some more authority? You got to grow spiritually, okay? Now, what I want you to do, and this is what I want you to do right now, okay? Because this kingdom teaching, we're going to come back with some more kingdom teaching. Matter of fact, y'all think y'all got me. Y'all going to get Ariel for some kingdom teaching, okay? And I'm going to start assigning people to do some kingdom teaching. But what I want you to do right now, I want preparing to work on your mind because your mind has to be transformed. Okay. And that means completely changed. Transformed according to the Greek means metamorpho. And our English term metamorphosis is derived from metamorpho. So that means your mind is in a cocoon state. It was trained that way. It was made that way based upon who, what you went through, okay? But God said, I got to transform it to the way you were created to be. So that mind, it literally means your noose, okay? And so I'm going to give you a task to do, all right? I, in my, I haven't released this book to the masses, okay? I released my new book. This is my new book, y'all. Conquering the Battleground Within Your Own Mind. Everybody say, yay! It's Pastor D's latest book. Women in the Deuteronomy Coaching Institute got it. Women in Deuteronomy Woman University got it. I've been releasing it incrementally. Now I'm releasing it to mighty Christian women, okay? I'm going to release it to the masses. That's my next stop. But because you're in this kingdom teaching, and I have broke down the various aspects of the mind according to the word of God. Not according to Young, not according to Freudian, not according to Glasser, not according to all these other theories, but according to the word of God, that you will know how to transform the part of your mind that the word of God is talking about. So in here, I wrote about the different aspects of your mind that you have to conquer. Okay. And in here, I put the scripture references so with some questions that's going to help you transform your mind that you may prove the acceptable will of God for your life because you're ripe for picking. Okay. Now it is a beautiful read. It's going to work you because it's a workbook in there, but I want you to go and get it now because as we continue the kingdom teachings, I'm going to teach about it. I'm going to talk about the mind because when God says one thing about the mind, you got to know what he's referring to and what aspect, okay? The book is only $12.95. Well, why are you giving it to us now? We in a pandemic. We got the COVID-19 going on. That's why you need to renew your mind. Because ain't nothing going to take over your mind, all right? Go to the website, www.dunamis-woman.com backslash shop and go get your book because I'm going to still go out to the post office and I'm going to still deliver it and I'm not going to have a mask on, but I'm going to walk according to the measure of faith, sober-minded, not thinking no higher than what I am, okay? I'm going to keep it real and I'm going to do what God called us to do. We're going to talk about the mind as we continue with kingdom teachings. I'm going to teach about the mind and I want us to be on one accord. Now, go to that website so we can start getting these books out here and we can start transforming our mind because once this stuff is over with and it's uplifted, God wants you to walk out of your house in a, in a mindset that is called kingdom. Everybody put up that kingdom, 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 a sovereign mindset, all right? I am so elated. 
I'm happy for you all. Thank you for being with me for four weeks in this particular series. More to come. This is what we do in Mighty Christian Women. I'm going to be teaching on Sunday morning. All right. I'm going to do a virtual teaching streaming live like everybody doing. I'm going to get on in the bandwagon. Okay. And so we're going to have more word, more word, because if we ain't got the word, y'all, we don't have nothing. All right. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we were able to sit. We were able to dine. We were able to sit at your feet. We were able to learn what you have for us as we are learning how to walk in our maturity, that we may walk in our authority. Father, we glorify you for your greatness. We thank you for your love towards us. We're going to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. Our minds will not be conformed to this world, but it's going to be transformed. It's going to be renewed that we may prove the acceptable will of God for our life, the perfect and acceptable will. And Father, we won't think more highly of ourselves, but Father God, we're going to continue to walk sober-minded, understanding the measure of faith that's been administered to each and every last one of us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your keeping power. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Bless every woman that has watched this and will ever watch it and be glorified in all that we do. Thank you all. In Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. Go get the book, www.dunamis-woman.com backslash shop, and I'll be shipping them out. And let's start working on that kingdom mindset. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.